Our first topic is on changing scenario of use of antiplatelet in acute coronary syndrome. To focus on this particular session, I would like to invite Dr. Shomnath Mukhobadhyay, a renowned interventional cardiologist, uh, as a speaker. And uh, to chair this session, I would like to request Dr. Biswai Kumar, a renowned nephrologist attached to Narayana Hospital, one of the founder member of HDS, and Dr. Kishore Sinha, senior consultant cardiologist. I will uh, like to request both the chairperson to please come and introduce our speaker. Hello, a very warm welcome, good morning to everyone for this eighth conference of Howard Diabetes Society, a journey which we started in 2018 and now we are five years down the lane on our eighth conference. So I have a pleasure to invite my very good friend, my colleague, I have worked with, when, with him when I was in medical college, Dr. Somnath Mukherjee an excellent uh, academician, practitioner, and a great cardiologist. Today, he will enlighten us on the use and the newer use of antiplatelet therapy in acute coronary syndrome. Over to you, Somnath. Good morning, Shubha Mohalaya. Uh, it is my immense pleasure to present something in front of such august, august, delegates and faculties, especially our chairpersons. Now, my topic is uh, something different from diabetes, that is changing scenario of use of antiplatelets in acute coronary setting. So, the reason for choosing this topic are, this is a relevant topic in our day-to-day -day clinical practice. There is some upcoming ideas, newer ideas that the platelet, what are the, what platelet, uh, antiplatelet, which antiplatelet and where to use these antiplatelets. And uh, next thing is the controversies in using these antiplatelet drugs in acute coronary setting. Without wasting time, we are going to the topic proper. So, what is the an ideal antiplatelet? What should be an ideal antiplatelet? It should be of faster onset, superior antiplatelet action, low resistance, less interpatient variability, less drug-drug interaction, rapid offset, proven data on mass reduction across all patient groups, proven mortality reduction, and low breeding risk. Now, if we choose a antiplatelet, an antiplatelet drug, we have to balance in periprocedural complications and clinical benefits. And we have to remember our uh, cost, ease of use, duration of therapy. These are the things to be remembered. This is a complex diagram showing different pathophysiological aspect of antiplatelet drugs. Now, during choosing these drugs, we have to remember some breeding risk, some ischemic risk, and antiplatelet responsiveness. Regarding breeding risk, there are clinical variables, procedural features like non-radial access or GP2B3A inhibition, and some scores, which are usually bleeding scores. Uh, recent days, ARC, AHBR, this is the commonly, uh, commonly used uh, breeding score. Next is clinical variable for ischemic risk, ACS setting, more than 75 years of uh, um, age, history of recurrent MI. Procedural features which can increase the ischemic uh, risk like multivessel disease, diabetes, 
CTO bifurcation, this is the complex scenario of angioplasty and some scores of ESC thrombotic definition syntax score and after that platelet responsiveness, platelet functional testing and genetic testing of that platelet molecule. We have, we, uh, there is a data that there is 30 percent resistance of clopidogrel uh, resistance in uh, all over the world but in Indian scenario it is different. So, three drugs in our armamentarium regarding antiplatelets uh, apart from aspirin that is ticagrel or prasugrel and clopidogrel. We all know about aspirin that is an age old molecule there are several trials to back this molecule for, uh, for its use in long term use or short term use in ACS setting and apart from this aspirin there are three drugs which are commonly used like ticagrel or prasugrel and clopidogrel. Among these three drugs only ticagrel is a reversible one and prasugrel and clopidogrel are irreversible one. Now, the recent recommendation, ESC 2023 recommendation told that these are the important things for these slides, the changing scenario. Aspirin is recommended as previous for all patient with loading dose followed by maintenance dose. In all ACS patient, P2Y12 receptor inhibitors is recommended in addition to aspirin given as initial oral loading dose followed by maintenance dose of at least 12 months unless there is high bleeding risk a PPI can be given to reduce GI bleed. Prasugrel is recommended, Prasugrel is recommended that is class 1 indication in uh, this scenario with 60 mg loading dose followed by 10 mg uh, once daily dose or 5 mg once daily in two different scenario where the patient is more than 75 year or body weight less than 60 kg. And ticagrelor is recommended uh, as a default strategy invasive or conservative 180 loading dose followed by 90 milligram twice daily. Clopidogrel is recommended when prasugrel and ticagrel are not available, cannot be tolerated or are contraindicated. So these are the three situations where ESC is recommending clopidogrel apart from prasugrel and ticagrel. In patient pres uh, presenting with ACS, stop DAPT to undergo CABG, it is recommended that they resume DAPT after surgery and to continue uh, for, last, uh, for 12 months. So there is a battle in different P2Y12 inhibitors. In Themis and Twilight's uh, trial, aspirin is there. But after Triton Timi 38 for Prasugrel and Treat and Plato trial for Ticagrelor, there is a clear cut benefit of these two molecules over Clopidogrel. And after ISAR React 5 recent studies, Prasugrel scores over Ticagrelor. And uh, in ISAR React trial, the population uh, surveyed around 5,000. So it is a good number of uh, patients are incorporated in this trial also. And after that, Prasugrel should be considered in preference to Ticagrelor for ACS patient who proceed to PCI, that is class 2A indication in ESC 2023. GP2B3 receptor antagonist should be considered if there is evidence of no reflow or thrombotic complication during PCI. That is a different class of molecule apart from these oral drugs. Uh, Apsiximab is uh, commonly used in our day to day practice. And uh, GP2B3 receptor that is uh, given IV. And uh, in, two, in two situation it is actually given. One is no reflow situation after angioplasty if the flow of the vessel is not so good or thrombotic complication after PCI. A P2Y12 receptor naive patient undergoing PCI cangrelor may be considered another molecule cangrelor that is IV antiplatelet that also can be given in uh, situations of P2Y12 receptor naive patient who are undergoing PCI. In older ACS patient with high bleeding risk, clopidogrel as the P2Y12 receptor inhibitor may be considered. Pre-treatment with P2Y12 receptor inhibitor may be considered who are undergoing primary PCI. Pre-treatment with P2Y12 receptor inhibitor may be considered in NST ACS patient who are not expected to undergo early invasive strategy that is initial angioplasty and do not have high bleeding risk. But that is class 3 indication that I am going to tell. Pre-treatment with GP2B3 receptor antagonist is not recommended in uh, uh, all scenarios. So we are loading in all patients who are not, we are not suspecting any uh, that we are doing, uh, we will do primary PCI or early, early invasive strategy. So ESC is recommending that pre-treatment with GP2B3 receptor antagonist is not recommended in all class of patients. Now considering these all molecules, 
Clopidogrel is less effective, more variable platelet inhibition, but cost is also low. And it is usually given in older patient. Back, backup trials are popular age trial, which incorporated 1,000 patients. And adherence to clopidogrel is also more. We can see here, we can see pointer is there. Is there any pointer? Point, you have no pointer. So in uh, red line, you can see the clopidogrel is, adherence of the clopidogrel is more than ticagrelor and prasugrel. And primary safety and net clinical benefit also in, uh, uh, if considered, then also bleeding risk is to some extent less with clopidogrel molecule and uh, considering ticagrelor and prasugrel. And net clinical benefit outcome was non-inferior. So in elderly patient more than 70 years of age, clopidogrel may be a preferred choice as far as recent guidelines. Now prasugrel already told that it is, uh, the priority is, uh, going for prasugrel, if not contraindicated. And GP2B3 inhibitor, I have told that is, it is a molecule for bailout situation. Candrelor, it is an IV drug and it can be given in PCI setting. So after the, having this initial loading dose and after having this PCI, what should be our maintenance therapy after revascularization? Actually, if we consider the era of thrombosis initially in our 1995-2000 where the PCI are usually done, defined as optimal approach of lowering early post-PCI thrombosis and stent thrombosis. They are very, uh, very, uh, there is a fear about uh, stent thrombosis, early stent thrombosis, late stent thrombosis and uh, identifying the risk factor for stent thrombosis, particularly DAPT uh, cessation is there as the adherence was poor. Increased use of BMS platform, that is bare metal stents are used and these are the situation where thrombosis events are more. But after that there is a bleeding awareness, recognized importance of bleeding variability and introduction of the potent P2I12 receptor like prasugrel, ticagrel or there is a chance of increased bleeding and we, uh, we are considering that this bleeding risk is they may be more. And advent of second generation drug eluting stents um, uh, made our uh, job easier. And nowadays there is an equipoise of safer stent platforms more nuanced understanding of DAPT cessation and experimental approaches of shorter duration of DAPT, dual antiplatelet therapy. So we are approaching towards more towards single therapy, single antiplatelet therapy. There are superiority of ticagrel or DAPT over clopidogrel uh, in different trials. Now this, this uh, chart is given in 2000, uh, 2023 ESC that what to be used, what to be used. In ACS setting, aspirin is to be used definitely, class 1 indication. If primary PCI is considered, then P2I12 receptor is definitely used. And if not, then do not go for P2I12 inhibitor initially. After invasive coronary angiography, ACS setting, we have to go for prasugrel and ticagrelor and when contraindicated, we have to go for clopidogrel. But if the cost is important factor, then clopidogrel may be used and if the patient's age is more than 70, then clopidogrel is preferred. So the factors associated with an increased bleeding risk after this PCI intervention, age, kidney disease, liver disease, active cancer, anemia, low platelet counts. These are the situation where the chance of bleeding is more, chance of thrombosis are more with OAC use, NSAIDs and stroke. These are the situation where thrombosis, chance of thrombosis is more. There is a academic research consortium guideline, major and minor criteria. You do not, uh, you need not remember this table because this table is for day-to-day uh, -day practice during PCI where high breeding risk is there and we have to calculate if there is high breeding risk then we have to cartel down our therapy. Now this is an important thing that what are the determinants of antithrombotic treatment in CAD? Patients age, sex, race, clinical presentation, CCS patient we have to go for uh, shorter duration of uh, DAPT, we have to go for longer duration of uh, single antiplatelet, go for single antiplatelet therapy more and more. Uh, comorbidities, if the patient is suffering from CKD, diabetes, peripheral arterial disease, then 
the chance of having thrombosis is more and we have to go for DAPT use. Co-medication need to oral anticoagulation treatment in a atrial fibrillation patient where co-administration of anticoagulation is recommended. Then we have to again cartel down our antiplatelet therapy along with that uh, oral anticoagulation therapy. So after having this, uh, this thing, there are several things that how long should we continue this DAPT therapy and how short duration uh, single antiplatelet long uh, long acting uh, long duration DAPT so there are several things DAPT three month plus aspirin DAPT one month plus P2I 12 millimeter so there are various strategies but in ESC they are recommending actually they are shorting three strategies abbreviated DAPT duration short DAPT followed by P2I 12 monotherapy and DAPT de-escalation meaning DAPT de-escalation means from prasugrel clopidogrel to ticagrel uh, sorry from prasugrel ticagrel or to clopidogrel or reduction of prasugrel dose. Now first is abbreviated DAPT duration they have told that after one month of abbreviated DAPT in master DAPT trial there is a uh, reduced risk of major bleeding events without any uh, significant change of primary outcome and major adverse cardiac event. Next is short DAPT followed by P2I12 receptor monotherapy. They are telling that in TICO trial and another trial, twilight trial, they are telling that after three months of aspirin plus uh, ticagrelor therapy, we can go for only ticagrelor therapy for next 12 months. And they uh, compared this strategy to aspirin plus ticagrelor for 12 months and they sh they have uh, they have they showed that the three month uh, DAPT followed by single antiplatelet 12 months with ticagrelor favors ticagrelor monotherapy after three months of DAPT. So this is an upcoming thing after three months of ticagrelor we can, and aspirin we can switch over to ticagrelor only. This is a trial. Another trial is twilight trial. Again, they are showing that ticagrelor monotherapy when compared to aspirin after some duration of dual, dual antiplatelet therapy can be beneficial. But another trial, stop DAPT2 ACS, they are uh, telling that do not go for too short therapy. They actually, uh, they actually uh, compared one month of DAPT with aspirin and clopidogrel and Ele another 11 month that is 12 months uh, overall therapy uh, for DAPT. So they compared you can see one month DAPT both side followed by 11 month clopidogrel and here control group is 12 month DAPT uh, with both drugs. But they have seen that the bleeding risk is to some extent less with this clopidogrel single drug but chance of MI increased with single use of clopidogrel. So do, uh, perhaps it is not better to go for single antiplatelet with clopidogrel but in with ticagrel or after three months there are some benefits. There is another trial called global leader trial. I am not going into the details of those trial that, uh, uh, that will be cumbersome to listen. Important thing is primary outcome, all-cause mortality and MI occurred in experimental group, they are uh, more or less similar. Uh, that one month DAPT was non-inferior to 12 months of DAPT in preventing death MI stroke without increased uh, uh, mess and there is a chance of less bleeding. So we are going towards an era where we have to reduce the bleeding risk also. Next is DAPT de-escalation. De-escalation trial means from aspirin plus ticagrelor or prasugrel to aspirin plus clopidogrel. Different trials like popular genetics trial or topic trial, they have shown benefits with this de-escalation. And Talos AMI, there is a trial named Talos AMI. They have uh, seen that aspirin plus ticagrelor for 30 days followed by only ticagrelor or uh, change to uh, aspirin ticagrelor, control group is aspirin plus ticagrelor, that is red line. First 30 days aspirin plus ticagrelor followed by for il next 11 months aspirin plus clopidogrel or aspirin plus ticagrelor. But they have seen comparable result. So we can switch over from after one month they have seen that uniform unguided de-escalation DAPT strategy switching from ticagrelor to clopidogrel was superior to the ticagrelor based continu continuing DAPT strategy. 
Another trial named host reduced polytech ACS trial, not going into the details. So important thing is when and how to shorten DAPT, we have to consider high thrombotic risk and low breeding risk. And we, then we have to go for this drug continuation. If there is high breeding risk, we can go for one month DAPT followed by SAPT. If there is high thrombotic risk, we can go for 12 months of DAPT. So, there is a recommendation. I am going to this slide uh, uh, first. Dr. Mukherjee, so, yes. two minutes. Okay, okay. So this is an important uh, slide that abbreviated DAPT strategy after one month of DAPT, we can go for single antiplatelet if there is high breeding risk. If there is no high breeding risk, then we have to continue these drugs up to 12 months. If there is more or less chronic scenario, then we can go for DAPT for 6 months. In acute scenario, we have to continue for 12 months. And this is after 12 months, aspirin, after 12 months, aspirin is our default molecule. We have to go for single use of aspirin. Somebody, some uh, cardiologists prefer clopidogrel over aspirin, considering low resistance in Indian scenario. That is not 30 percent perhaps. Larger studies are required. So they are uh, actually advocating clopidogrel single use after 12 months. But default strategy according to the recent guideline ESC, aspirin after 12 months uh, single molecule is important and it is recommended. And long term DAT prolonged DAPT after if uh, high thrombotic risk is considered then we can go for rivaroxaban use or P2Y12 uh, receptor use along with aspirin and if not then we can go for aspirin only. So some new things are there in our uh, antiplatelet scenario in patient presenting with ACS stop DAPT to undergo coronary artery bypass grafting and resume DAPT after surgery for at least 12 months. So CABG in ACS means you have to give 12 months antiplatelet therapy if high breeding risk is not there. In older ACS patient, clopidogrel is preferred. In patient who are uh, even free 3 to 6 months of DAPT and who are not high ischemic risk, single antiplatelet therapy with a P2Y12 receptor should be considered. Single antiplatelet with P2Y12 up to 12 months. P2Y12 inhibitor monotherapy may be considered alternative to aspirin monotherapy for long term treatment. As I told, some uh, cardiologists advocate in P uh, high reading risk patient, aspirin or P2Y12 receptor inhibitor monotherapy after one month of DAPT may be considered. In patient requiring OAC withdrawing antiplatelet therapy at six months with continuing OAC may be considered and de escalation of antiplatelet therapy in first 30 days after an ACS event is not recommended. And uh, uh, potent uh, prasugrel scores over uh, uh, ticagrelor in different in ISAR react trial and both the molecules scores over clopidogrel. So this is another important slide. I am not going into the detail due to uh, the sake of time. That is patient with ACS and indication for OAC in mainly in atrial fibrillation patient who are suffering from ACS. Then this should be the strategy. Just in brief. You have to give triple therapy, that is anticoagulation and DAPT for at least one week, preferably one month, if not, uh, if high uh, bleeding risk is not so. After one month, you have to calculate the bleeding risk. If low bleeding risk, then you have to go for six months of triple therapy, uh, 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 sorry, one month of triple therapy, you have to go for dual therapy with P2I12 receptor antagonist along with uh, OAC or Aspirin along with OAC. OAC means either NOAC or warfarin or acitrom, whatever. So we have to go for six months therapy. Then again, we have we have to calculate the bleeding risk. Then we have to go for 12 months therapy of dual anti uh, dual therapy. That is dual therapy with antiplatelet and uh, anticoagulation. And after 12 months, we have to go for single use of anticoagulation. So thank you for your patient hearing. These are the recent scenario of antiplatelets. Thank you, Dr. Mukherjee. Can I have one chair, please? Question, <coughs> is there any question? One more question to Dr. Mukherjee. Yes, yes, sir. When you are planning for stent, and what is your take to decide what type of uh, anticoagulant you, are, you will be using to prevent post-stenotic thrombosis? You got my question? Uh, How you are planning when you are giving a stent how you are planning with selection of the anticoagulants. Anticoagulants so, or antiplatelets? Antiplatelets, better, better. Antiplatelets. antiplatelets, so, antiplatelets so that uh, we can prevent post-stenotic thrombosis. So, 
डिफल्ट सेटिंग इज गो फर टिकाग्रेलर और प्रसुक्रेल एलंग उथ एसपिरिन लोडिंग डोज फलोड बै मेन्टेन डोज एंड इफ देर इज रेजिस्टेंस चान्स अफ एनी कन्ट्रा इंडिगेशन अफ टिकाग्रेल और प्रसुक्रेल दें उ हाव टू गिव क्लोपिटोक्रेल डिएपिटी dual antiplatelet therapy and if the high bleeding risk is there and if we consider that the patient may undergo stent thrombosis then rivaroxaban 2.5 mg twice daily can be given in such scenario before uh, during st after stenting thank you so much speaker thank you chairperson somnath i just have a small sure, sure, sure. question now this is a practical problem which all we face especially these patients who are on multiple antiplatelets or single antiplatelet and then we have to pose this patient for any surgical uh, procedure for example me we have want to okay. put them for okay. any okay. biopsies so what is the safest platelet to antiplatelet to have and how long before we should stop them this is a basic if doubt in all of us mind if the patient is taking clopidogrel or prasugrel clopidogrel or prasugrel then 7 days should be the ideal period of stopping but in case of high bleeding risk surgery and if the patient is taking ticagrel or then it is 5 days and in aspirin it is nowadays it is said that it is 2 days only 2 to 3 days is sufficient for after stoppage of uh, aspirin for 2 to 3 days we can go for cavg also and on the other hand when we can restart immediately after 2 days 2 days an important thing we should keep in our mind that post stenting or acute coronary syndrome first 6 months should be the very vulnerable period for going for any stopping antiplatelet drugs for the fear of stent thrombosis and other complica ischemic complications so if we can defer the operation or the procedure for 6 months at least following the acute coronary syndrome or post stenting that will be the welcome situation not before absolute, that absolutely absolutely sir yes please yes please like uh, right now we uh, usually don't stop antiplatelets for phaco but in case of sorry, sorry ma'am for phaco I'm, i'm asking about eye surgery yes yes uh, in case of phaco emulsification we usually don't don't stop platelets antiplatelets but what about vitrectomies what about surgeries retinal surgeries retinal surgeries if like topical like anesthesia is being used no we have to give so we have to stop so how many days before at stopping? least 3 to 5 days uh, for aspirin uh, it is better to stop uh, aspirin okay. also 3 uh, to 5 days but recommended uh, st uh, stoppage time for ticagrel uh, is 5 days and for clopidogrel and uh, prasugrel it is 7 days 7 days yes and uh, when can we start it again 2 days after after 2 days of uncomplicated surgery okay. thank you any, any other question other question So if no other questions from the floor we can wind it up thank you thank you thank so much thank you thank you fantastic presentation <laughs> thank you sir thank you thank you speaker thank you uh, chairperson so please be there uh, we have a small token of appreciation on behalf of hds i would like to request dr shoikot ghosh to please uh, present this uh this wonderful frame has been made by shongbedon uh, rcc of rotary orunodoy haura so please Thank you sir thank you thank you